Hello students, in today's video, we will discuss about the development of inferior vena cava. Now, dear students, as you know that initially there is a cardinal veins and these veins are the main venous drainage of the embryo. Now, when you will see the formation of the cardinal vein, it consists of the anterior cardinal vein and the posterior cardinal vein. Anterior cardinal vein drains the blood of cephalic part of the embryo, while the posterior cardinal vein drains the rest of the embryo. Now, in this image, as you can see that this is your sinus venosus, this is your anterior cardinal vein and there is a posterior cardinal vein. And these both veins are fusing together to form the common cardinal vein and then this common cardinal vein drains into the respective horn of sinus venosus. Now, dear students, when you are uh, reading the development of inferior vena cava, you have to understand that initially by the fourth week, there is a symmetrical development of the cardinal veins on both the side of the embryo. Now, as you can see in this diagram that this is your midline. Now, here you will have the anterior cardinal vein on both the side. This is the vein on this side. This is on another side. In the same way, you can see that these veins are developing symmetrically on both the side of the embryo. But what will happen as the growth is advances? Now, this symmetrical development is not there. So, what will happen, dear students, that by the fifth or seventh week of the development, there is a formation of some additional longitudinal venous channels. These are known as subcardinal and supracardinal veins. So, dear students, whenever you are writing the short note on the development of inferior vena cava, first you have to mention about the cardinal veins and then you have to write down this line that by the fifth or seventh week of the development, there is a formation of two more additional venous veins and these veins are known as subcardinal and supracardinal veins. Now, in both veins, you will realize that the subcardinal vein appear first and supracardinal vein appears later. Clear? So, first we will discuss about the subcardinal vein. What is subcardinal vein? Now, when you are talking about the formation of the subcardinal vein, you have to understand that in the humans, there are three sets of the kidneys. One is the pronephric, then mesonephric, and finally, we have the metanephric kidney. So, dear students, when we are talking about the mesonephric kidneys, there are some lower vertebrate where you have these some cardinal vein as a permanent feature. And in the those lower vertebrates, you do not have the inferior vena cava. So, this is the one thing which we ha have to keep in mind that subcardinal veins are the veins which actually drains the developing kidneys in the embryonic life. But because we do not have the mesonephric kidney, we have the metanephric kidney. So, these subcardinal veins having the remodeling or there is a modification occurs and these subcardinal veins will persist in the formation of segments of the inferior vena cava, renal veins, suprarenal veins and gonadal veins in the human beings. Clear? So, now here you can see in this diagram that this is your posterior cardinal vein and this is the subcardinal veins which are appearing on both the side and they are draining your developing mesonephric kidneys in the embryo. So, what will happen in the fourth week of the life, what is the important event is taking place that the mesonephric kidneys enlarges and they are highly vascularized. So, what will happen initially these mesonephric kidneys are drained by the posterior cardinal vein, but after the fourth week, a new system take over this function and that is known as subcardinal vein. So, when you are writing this short note, you have to understand this concept that initially these kidneys are draining into the posterior cardinal vein, but because the vascularity of the, these mesonephros increases, so the function of the venous drainage is not there in the posterior cardinal vein. Now, these veins are there to drain the mesonephros. And this set of the vein is known as subcardinal veins and these subcardinal veins develop as a outgrowth of the posterior cardinal vein. So, you are ultimately able to understand that this vein is connected with both the end uh, with the posterior cardinal vein. Clear? So, now it receives the vein from the mesonephros. 
So, if somebody will ask what is subcardinal vein, you should reply that subcardinal veins are the veins which drains the mesonephric kidneys in the embryo and these veins develop as a outgrowth of the posterior cardinal veins. Clear? Now, there is another set is known as supracardinal vein. Now, supracardinal vein appears in 6th or 7th week in a dorsal area of the developing embryo and these supracardinal veins lies paravertebral in position on both the side of sympathetic chain. So, if you will see the embryo, you know that posteriorly in the embryo you will have the vertebral column and on the both side of vertebral column you will have the formation of your supracardinal vein. And these supracardinal veins basically drains the body wall. Now, this is the most important concept to understand that these supracardinal veins basically drains the body wall and they are becoming the intercostal veins. So, when we are having the two sets of the vein, one is subcardinal, another is supracardinal. What is the difference? The difference is that subcardinal veins are there to drain the developing mesonephros. And what is supracardinal? Supracardinal veins are the veins which are basically drains the body wall with the help of intercostal vein. So, the supracardinal vein do not directly contribute in the formation of inferior vena cava. What is the meaning of this line? Dear students, you have to understand this concept that when we are talking about the adult life, when you will dissect, you will realize that our body walls are drained by the azygous system of vein. You know that intercostal veins drain into the azygous system of vein and azygous system of vein drain into the superior vena cava. So, when we are talking about the inferior vena cava, inferior vena cava basically drains your lower limb, it drains your gonads, it drains your kidney and then it will go into the liver. So, my dear students, we have seen that the subcardinal veins are basically draining your developing kidneys and later on the subcardinal veins merge with the posterior cardinal vein. So, what is the main source of the formation of the inferior vena cava? Answer is subcardinal veins. Clear? So, but there are some anastomosis which develops between the sub and supracardinal veins. That is why you should have the some basic knowledge of the supracardinal veins and its contribution in the inferior vena cava. So, but what will happen next? And the next part is that there is the appearance of the four anastomoting channel. So, how they will appear? So, first you have to understand that this is your anterior and this is your posterior cardinal vein. In the same way, on the opposite side, this is your anterior and this is your posterior cardinal vein. Now, what will happen? You have to draw the two another sets of longitudinal veins. One is subcardinal vein. So, this is your subcardinal vein on this side of and this is the subcardinal vein of your other side. Clear? Then there is a appearance of the another channel which is known as supracardinal. So, this is the supracardinal vein of this side and this is the supracardinal vein of this side. Clear? Now, suppose this is the left side, this is the right side. Now, the anastomosis will develop. First, the anastomosis develop between the two subcardinal vein. So, these are the two subcardinal vein. So, there is a midline anastomosis developed between the two subcardinal vein. And this anastomosis lies at the level of the developing kidneys. So, at this point you will have the renal veins which are going into the kidneys. So, what is these veins? These are the subcardinal veins. So, there is a first formation of a transverse anastomosis and this is the anastomosis between the two subcardinal veins. Then you will have the second anastomosis between the supra and subcardinal vein. Now, the anastomosis between the supra and subcardinal vein develops here. So, this is the anastomosis between the supracardinal and subcardinal veins. Then you will have the anastomosis between the extremities or the lower end of posterior cardinal veins. So, these are the posterior cardinal vein and here you will have the anastomosis between the two posterior cardinal veins. Clear? Then you will have the fourth anastomosis and this anastomosis develops between the right subcardinal vein with right hepatocardiac channel. Now, what is hepatocardiac channel? 
Now, dear students, in my class of the formation of portal vein, I explained that initially this is a sinus venosus. Now, sinus venosus is having the right horn and the left horn, and this right horn is receiving the right side of vital line vein. Now, this left horn regresses. So, there is a shifting of the blood from left to right side. So, this right vital line vein increases in the size and this enlarged right vital line vein labeled as a hepatocardiac channel. So, there is a formation of a anastomosis between the right subcardinal vein and right sided vital line vein or hepatocardiac channel. So, how many anastomosis you have to draw in exam? Four. What are these four? This is the first anastomosis between the lower end of right and left posterior cardinal vein. This is the second anastomosis between the two subcardinal vein. This is the third anastomosis between the right side your subcardinal and supracardinal vein. This is the fourth anastomosis between the right side subcardinal and right hepatocardiac channel. Again, I will tell you the four anastomosis. First anastomosis, now this is the first anastomosis between the right and left terminal part of posterior cardinal vein. Then this is the second area where you will have this midline anastomosis between the two right and left subcardinal vein. Then you will have the third anastomosis between the right side sub and supracardinal veins. Then again you will have the fourth anastomosis which is again on the right side between the hepatocardiac channel and subcardinal vein. Clear? Now, dear students, why these anastomosis is important? Because when you are doing the formation or the development of the inferior vena cava, you have to understand all of these four anastomosis. Clear? So, my dear students, what will happen that when you are having these anastomosis, some part of these veins will persist and some part will disappear. So, which part will persist? These are the areas which will persist and you will have a list of the areas of the inferior vena cava. So, inferior vena cava always develops in the segment. So, my dear students, first I will tell you or I will explain this diagram. Now, what is the most cranial end of inferior vena cava? So, most uh, cranial end of inferior vena cava means this is the end and this most cranial end is going to open into the right atrium and this end develops from the hepatocardiac channel or dilated right vital line vein. In my class of the portal vein, I explain this that this right hepatocardiac channel or dilated right vital line vein is a terminal end of inferior vena cava. So, this is the first portion which develops as a terminal end of inferior vena cava. Now, you should uh, have the idea that what is the next down connection? I just explain you there is a one anastomosis and that is the anastomosis here. Now, this anastomosis is between the right hepatocardiac channel and what is this? This is your right side subcardinal vein. So, this is the anastomosis. So, now this anastomosis is going to form this second segment. So, what is this second segment? This second segment develops from the anastomosis. So, you have to understand these things in sequence. So, what is the highest uh, structure? Hepatocardiac channel. Below the hepatocardiac channel, you will have the anastomosis. So, this is the anastomosis. So, this anastomosis develops as a second area and this is an anastomosis between the hepatocardiac channel and right subcardinal vein. So, this area has to be developed from the subcardinal vein. That is why you will have the anastomosis between the 1 and 3. So, what is 1? Hepatocardiac channel. What is 3? Subcardinal vein. And what is 2? Anastomosis between the 1 and 3. Then you will have the 5. Now, what is 5? Supracardinal. And what is 4? Again, the anastomosis between the subcardinal and supracardinal. So, where is this? So, this is subcardinal, this is supracardinal. So, this is the anastomosis. So, the one anastomosis is here, one anastomosis is here. Then, what is this? This is the area which is a terminal part 
and here in the terminal part you will have right side posterior cardinal vein and this anastomosis. So this anastomosis will form this left side common iliac vein while this right side common iliac and terminal branches develop from the terminal end of right posterior cardinal vein and this is the terminal end of left posterior cardinal vein. Clear? So my dear students, whenever you are writing the development of inferior vena cava, again I am explaining this that you have to first understand the anastomosis. So there are four anastomoses. What are these four anastomoses? One anastomosis develops in upper part between the hepatocardiac channel and right subcardinal vein. Then the second anastomosis developed between the right side subcardinal and supracardinal vein. The third anastomosis developed between the terminal ends of right and left posterior cardinal vein. Now what is the future of this anastomosis which is a midline anastomosis between the right and left subcardinal vein. Now my dear students, now this anastomosis crosses the midline and in adult life you can see that this portion of the left renal vein which crosses the abdominal aorta form this midline anastomosis of right and left subcardinal veins. So when you are writing in the theory which part formed by the which segment of these veins. So when you are going from lower to above, now this is the caudal most segment and this caudal most segment mainly develop from the right side of your posterior cardinal vein and the anastomosis between the right and left vein. Then above that what you will have, you will have a connection with this supracardinal vein. So this is the next post renal segment develops from the right side supracardinal vein. Then you will have this anastomosis between the right supracardinal and subcardinal vein. So this is the renal segment develops from the right subcardinal supracardinal anastomosis. Then you will have the right sided subcardinal vein. So this is the pre renal segment develops from the right side subcardinal vein. Then you will reach to the hepatic segment which is having first anastomosis and then right sided dilated vital line vein or right hepatocardiac channel. Clear? So again I am revising this. If you are coming from above downward, how to keep this thing in mind? From above downward, this is one that is right hepatocardiac channel. This is two that is the anastomosis between the hepatocardiac channel and right side subcardinal vein. Then this is three which is right side subcardinal vein. Then this is four which is a anastomosis between the right subcardinal and right supracardinal vein. Then this is the five which is the part of right supracardinal vein. This is the six which is a part of your right posterior cardinal vein with the anastomosis of your opposite side of the vein. Clear? So in this way this inferior vena cava develops in the six segments and these segments are actually connecting with each other and when you will have the straight tube you will have this adult form of inferior vena cava. Now the applied part comes is the double inferior vena cava when you are writing the double inferior vena cava it is generally formed below the level of renal vein and when you will see this diagram here you can see that this is the your right sided inferior vena cava this is the left renal vein and below that you are able to understand there is a persistence of the part of which segment answer is supracardinal system and which is the area left side. So when the left area of supracardinal system fails to regress you will have a formation of the inferior vena cava. Now the blood from this part will go first into the left inferior renal vein and then through the left renal vein this blood will drain into the right atrium. Clear? So my dear students at the end of this lecture of the inferior vena cava formation what is the key factor? The key factor is appearance of subcardinal vein and supracardinal vein. What is subcardinal vein? Subcardinal vein is a vein which basically drains the developing mesonephros. What is supracardinal vein? Supracardinal veins are the veins which is basically going to drain your body wall. So once the supracardinal veins appears, the posterior cardinal veins slowly regresses. 
and later on there is the appearance of the four anastomoses and these anastomoses are the key factors when you are writing that segmental development of inferior vena cava. So, this is all for the session. Thank you.